Up next on the Handy Guys podcast, home networking. So Brian, I want to talk on this episode about high-speed inter-networking. We always hear from our local providers, our ISPs, our cable companies, that they're going to give you high-speed internet, right? That's right, right. But so often, we have wireless routers in our home, right? We, we yeah. set up, a, we get a wireless router so we can connect our PCs and our right. computers and our laptops and our iPads, I, I and they're my, great. My provider, that's, you know, they give you that little router and it has Wi-Fi in right. it. Right, and it's the easiest way to network your equipment without a doubt, but there is a problem. <laughs> What's that, Paul? What's the problem? <laughs> well, sometimes you get interference, you it slows down, there's latency, there's problems with the speed. You're and, talking tech. Speak, oh, uh, tech I don't speak, this Paul. isn't a tech show, you gotta go somewhere else for that. But what I want to talk about is using wired Ethernet instead yes. of wireless in order to get the best bang for your buck, to get constant speed, not have interference, and not and it's have gonna be reliable. Yeah, not have machines stepping on one another. And this is a project a typical handy guy can handle as well. Absolutely. All right, so we'll talk about that and all the tools you need to do it. But first, let's give our contact information. All right. If you want to reach the handy guys, just go to www.handyguyspodcast.com. Click on the contact tab on the website. All of our information is there. You can just email us, us at handyguyspodcast.com. Go to our YouTube channel, subscribe to us there. You can send us a tweet, too. When you tweet get your us. House wired. We're at Handy Guys on Twitter. All right, up next, Ethernet. So, Brian, all of our Internet traffic goes over basically what we call Ethernet. It's a protocol. It's the cabling or the wireless. It's the way that it communicates. And so it's... We can have either wired Ethernet right. or we use wireless, which is very convenient. But what I want to talk tonight is about wired Ethernet and the advantages of it and why you might want to run it in your home. That's right. Well, you're going to run it just because you get a dedicated channel to the Internet for whatever is plugged into it. <clears throat> a lot of multimedia devices now use Ethernet. Your, your PC, your laptop can use that hardwired Ethernet. Your streaming media devices, if you're watching us on your Roku, can use a hard Ethernet device. Right, so if you have an Apple TV or a Roku right. device or some other streaming device, even a TV now, some of them That's have right. Ethernet ports right in them. They look, they're RJ45, like sort of like a phone jack, but wider. Right. You can plug right into that, and now that device, you don't have to worry about programming passwords to get on your wireless network, <laughs> right. knowing the network name, it's secure. having it accidentally connect to the neighbor's network, <laughs> have all those other problems. You have a secure connection, and it's nice and fast. Let me share a story, Paul, if I may. I just got a new Roku. A Roku is a streaming device. It's a little thing about the size of a hockey puck. You plug it into your TV on one end, it plugs into the internet on the other side, and it la allows you to get a lot of online video content like the Handy Guys. Well, their new one, one of their new ones, doesn't have an Ethernet port on it. So they're uh, saving a couple of bucks. It only right. works with Wi-Fi. But I'll tell you what, watching Netflix, I don't get the full benefit. I don't get the high definition. Oh, it goes down to a lower <clears throat> depth. It goes down to a lower depth. But when I'm plugged in on a hard wire with my old Roku, I get the 1080p, the full high definition video. Okay, so you want to wire your house and maybe you're handy, maybe you've done some electrical wiring right. before. The nice thing about this, you don't have to worry about getting electrocuted. It's right. very low voltage. Um, and let's, uh, let's talk about how you get started. You want to wire it throughout your house. Right, so you're going to need to figure out where you're going to want to put your ethernet jacks, whether it's behind your home entertainment center, it's where you have your home PC. And you you can, can even use uh, phone jacks if you have them. Sometimes if, they, they, right. if you have Where, wall plates for your old phone jacks, which no one uses anymore, right? right? They have wireless phones. Right. You can use those sure. boxes, yeah. Right, so you can use the same box. But if you're going to put in a new box, you don't need to go to something like this that has the cable clamps and everything this in it. This is for electrical. Yeah, right. right. So you can, but they make a much simpler box. You can just outline this on the wall, draw a little outline, cut it out, put that in, and bring your cable right into a box like this. So this will clamp to the back of your drywall, your sheetrock, hold right. it tight, and then you can put your faceplate right on and... And we'll talk about the, the jack and how to hook that right. up. Right, your little ethernet jack will go in the faceplate, just like so, and that goes on, and then you'll have a nice finished look to your ethernet connection. 
but what do you do at the other end? So that's that's behind your home right. entertainment center, behind your PC, whatever. Well, but on the other end, where does that wire go? Well, once we have, you fish it you through have the both walls. ends. On the on the wall end, you got to punch down the cable into the jack. Right. On the other end, you're going to run it back to a punch down block where you can run. If you have multiple connections, you can have up. You know, depending on the size of the block, you can have eight, ten, twelve connections running to all your TVs. If you have ten TVs. Right. Or whatever, and it will. They all look like this on the back. They get punched down to the back of the punch down block, and you then run those connections into your internet router. Most routers right. that are even wireless come with Ethernet ports on them. Right. So you'll run one cable from there to your Ethernet router, and from from your punch down block to each of your locations where you want. Internet. Right. So you're going to have to figure out how to fish that wire through your wall. That's you know? a whole nother show, Paul. <laughs> I know. You might need a, a, a fishing tool like this. This is what we use for electrical wire uh, to get it through the walls. You need to find out how you can get it back to where your, your router is located in your house. Right. And um, the, the, what tools are you going to need? Well, we, we showed the, the, the fishing tool, but you're also going to need a punch down tool that looks like this. It's a little has a little blade on it, and it actually will push the wire into the grooves on the back of the jack and terminate the wire. And it also trims the wire at the same time. Right. So your typical Ethernet cable is going to have four pairs of wires. It's all color coded in the back of the, the jack and this tool will insert it into the slots like Paul said. Right. So you'll have a slot and they're all, they usually have a key on it, these jacks, and you simply put it into the jack and there's a cutting end on it and you press down and it pushes it in the termination slot. Do it one or two, three times, and it, if it works, all works well, <laughs> it'll cut off the extra wire, there it goes. So I did one, and this particular jack is color-coded, so you have an idea of whether you're putting in a green wire, or what they call white green, which is mostly white and a little green, or a white orange, or a solid orange, etc. And you can go on the internet and they can tell you exactly what wires you need where, or there's a key right on the jack to do that. So that's how you punch it down on both ends. You run the wires through, and you need this tool if you're ever going to put a finished plug on a cable. Right. I don't recommend doing that. That's a little tricky. Yeah. And quite honestly, you don't need to do that anymore. If you're doing this, you're putting your jack in, and you're putting a punch down block or another jack next to your router, then you can buy a pre-made patch cable the right length for whatever you need. But if you need a custom length, yeah, you're going to need a $50 tool, and you're going to need the plugs and the wire uh, to assemble your right. own cable. So you can put your own plugs on like this, but again, as Brian said, you might as well buy manufactured cables. They're not that expensive, and you know that they're probably going to have a good termination right. and be solid. Now, there's one other thing you need to take into consideration, Brian. What's that? This kind of cable you use. What kind of cable is this? Is this just phone cable? What is this? No, it's it's an Ethernet cable. And they come, you'll hear Cat 3, Cat 4, Cat 5, Cat 6. Cat standing cat for category. 5E, 5, 6E. Right? Category. Right, category. So most Ethernet that you're going to do in your house, category 5 or better is going to be what you want to use. And that'll give you your um, fastest speeds available for what yeah. technologies exist today. Most likely you're going to want to start these days with category 5E, which is 5E. extended, I think, 5 extended. Right. If you get into 6 or 6E, it can get a little bit difficult to work with, but if you start at 5E minimum, you're, you're going to get good cable, and you can buy it in chunks of, I think, usually, over, if you find it on the internet, it's 500 feet, which is often more than you need, mm -hmm. but you can usually sell what you have left on Craigslist or something like that, or if you're going to put a lot of runs in your home, you'd be surprised how fast you use it up. That's so. right. So it comes in a big spool, and away you go. All right. So this is the cable. You've got it run through your house. So the key thing is try to run it in important areas like behind your entertainment center. You know, a few years ago, Paul, I never would have thought <laughs> Ethernet behind my home <laughs> entertainment center. In my family room, I've got Roku, Ethernet, television, Play Ethernet. Sony PlayStation, Ethernet. I've got uh, my home theater DVR, PC yeah. uh, or a DVR. So Ethernet. you have all these devices that have Ethernet jacks on them, and now you don't have to worry. Oh, I got to plug in the, right. the password. You just plug this thing in, and you're ready to go. That's right. All right, so there you have it. Oh, by the way, a couple other tools. You'll need wire strippers, and if you want to staple the wire up to keep it out of way onto joists or something like that, you can get little staples to 
uh, organize the wire. And uh, also I talked about my punch down block, which you can see here. And uh, I have that. And then of course you need that router that you, you need to get That's your right. ethernet router. Your home networking router. All right, so there you have it. Hopefully you'll get better performance. Let us know if you have any questions. If you want to go ahead and install ethernet, I'm with you, Brian. I didn't realize I'd still be talking about this, but yet when I use it, it makes all the difference in the world. It sure does. All right, so that's your Ethernet tip for this show. Uh, hopefully you'll join us next time on the Handy Guys podcast. Thanks.